it felt like you know not looking at the box score, but it just felt like he was a 15 point per guy per game guy for a few years now and that was kind of what he was but that was his career high and he's continued to get better everybody welcome back to another episode of nba now it's your boy dom and we can get right into things here today so today 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 we are talking about the san antonio spurs and specifically we're talking about Dejounte murray um now i made a video earlier on in the season where i kind of said you know this is kelton jansen uh kelton johnson's opportunity to break out sorry um it's his opportunity to break out and kind of take over this year and just see what he can kind of do potentially be a star we saw what he you know he went to the olympics and everything like that um and it's kind of seems like he could be pop's guy this year right um but you know when you look at it Dejounte murray is that guy um for the san antonio spurs a team that although probably not the best day to be talking about them coming off of a pretty bad loss last night um now not the worst loss ever but they uh they did lose to the clippers yesterday um to extend their losing streak um where they are now on a three game losing streak but um they're not the worst team in the league and this is somehow a team that's tied record wise with the minnesota timberwolves which is a detriment to the timberwolves more than anything um but i think when we look at the san antonio spurs we look at them as probably the least talented team in all of basketball um and they've really kind of like uh what's the word for it they've really just put that to bed you know what i mean um now they might not they're not the most talented team and that's that's absolutely certain but when you look at some other teams across the league they definitely put themselves in the conversation to not be the worst talented team um Detroit falls in that category. Having Cade Cunningham does a lot for Detroit. Um, and then OKC falls in that category, although they've also found ways to win a few games here in the early part of the season. But overall, the Spurs, though they are 4-10, and ten, they're in a lot of games, and they just don't quite have that superstar power to kind of hold things off. But they have good players on this roster and don't, um, don't think that they don't. You know what I mean? Now, their only four wins aren't against the greatest teams like Sacramento and Orlando and then Orlando. And they did meet, beat Milwaukee as well. Um, but Milwaukee's been struggling here to start the season overall. So, I mean, they're looking pretty good to start the season. And obviously the big two guys to look at, obviously, is Kelvin Johnson, which if you want to see more about that, obviously go check out that video that I mentioned earlier and DeJounte Murray um and DeJounte Murray he's averaging almost 19 points per game he is averaging eight assists per game eight rebounds per game and two steals per game so you know he's doing it on both ends and he's averaging almost 20 points per game and it's kind of funny for me to make this video because um you know I've been looking at it and everything like that and he's a guy that's really the only guy or one of the only guys showing up for them some nights but, you know, to just be doing that on both sides of the ball as well, I was personally ready to sell my DeJounte Murray stock. Um, I looked at kind of the way his career was going, how his averages were leading. Just he didn't feel like he was really ever going to become that star, especially after his injury and everything like that. I thought he would always just be a mediocre player. And although last year he improved on his season prior to that, um, he played 67 out of the 72. So he showed that he wasn't quite as injury prone. And then he went up to 15 points per game, which was a career high for him last year. Obviously, he's continued to exceed that um, this year. But I thought that he was going to peak at that. Like, it it felt like, you know, not looking at the boxer, but it just felt like he was a 15-point-per-guy 
per game guy for a few years now and that was kind of what he was but that was his career high and he's continued to get better and so something that when you look at his kind of stats and stuff it reminds you of another player that's also having a very good year in OG Ananobi another guy I made a video about as well but OG and DeJounte Murray having proved their scoring every single year of their career and they came into the league as defensive guys you know what I mean guys that you look at to be high level defenders for your team and any offense that they do end up developing is only that much better right um and DeJounte Murray you know in his rookie season he started off by only playing 38 games he averaged almost four points per game then he bumped that up to playing the 81 out of 82 games and he had eight points per game he was looking pretty promising then he gets his um ACL right he, he tears that and then he comes back in the 2019-2020 season, plays 66 games, and gets about 10 points per game. Obviously, like I said last year, um, played 67 and had 15, almost 16 points per game, and it felt like that's where he was. But he somehow just jumped that, you know what I mean? And a big part, not only, he's jumped his points every single year of his career, he's jumped his assists every single year of his career, he's jumped his rebounds every single year of his career, and he's jumped his steals almost every single year of his career. So that is insane to just see the progression that he's had, especially coming off of such a bad injury that, you know, deters a lot of careers. And I think that's something that we forget about sometimes when we look at DeJounte Murray is that he went through an injury that's taken out stars and taken out players' careers entirely before. And he's come back and he's looked better. So, I mean, for his steals, the only year that he didn't go up was last year where he went from 1.7 in 2019-2020 to 1.5 last year. He's now up to over two steals a game for the first time in his career. And to just exceed what you've done prior in every single statistical category, and although that might not continue, but it's pretty significant in most categories. It's a three-point jump in assists, a one-point jump in rebounds, a half a steal extra per game, and like I said, a three to four-point jump in points. So to just exceed that every single year of your career projects you to be a very, very good player. And last night, he was pretty much the only bright spot on the Spurs. Um, he wasn't the only one that had a good game. Derek White didn't have the worst game. Um, he didn't shoot very well from three. He only shot one for four, but he had 19 points. But DeJounte Murray was really the only thing that the Spurs had last night to do anything. Um, as Keldon Johnson was pretty bad last night. Um, he only had 10 points and DeJounte Murray carried the entire scoring load. He played 38 minutes, by far the most on the team. The next with closest was Keldon Johnson with 33, but he still was out there five more minutes longer than that. And he had 26 points, 12 rebounds, almost a triple double because he had nine assists. And then he had three steals as well. Shot 57% from the field and 50% from three. And a big knock on him prior in his career was it was like, okay, this guy, we want his offense to develop and everything. He's a good defender. Um, he's a capable playmaker, capable rebounder for um, his position and everything like that. But his three point his three-pointers started to come around as you know the years have kind of gone on um not being anything fantastic you know what i mean still being around that league average but uh being willing to attempt more of them obviously early in his career he was struggling to attempt one a game and now in the last two years he's averaging over three three-pointers per game and you know this year he's making one three-pointer per game so that does a lot for you it's something that Ben Simmons could learn from um but you don't have to be the greatest three-point shooter at the guard position if you're you know such a good defender and you have all these other things that bring to the table but you just need to be willing to take them and DeJounte Murray has shown that he's willing to take them within the rhythm of the offense he's willing to take them when he's open and he's not going to become a liability from out there he's just going to take what the defense is giving him at that point but he's not going to rely on his three-point shot right there's guys that can rely on their three-point shot steph curry um luka Doncic, james harden damian lillard these guys if they need a bucket they are typically going to rely on a three-point shot rather than a drive to the to the lane right and those guys are great and obviously you know they're superstars and everything like that but not everybody has to rely on their three-point shot you know what i mean when you look at big guys they don't 
rely on their three-point shot. It's, they're willing to shoot it. If you're not the greatest shooter, you have to be willing to shoot it sometimes still. But, like, Giannis, he doesn't rely to come down the court. And now we've seen him develop his three-point shot as well. But he doesn't rely to come down the court, make a few moves, pull up from three every time that he just needs a bucket. No, he's going to go to his bread and butter and that's take it to the rim and do whatever. Uh, Joel Embiid, obviously. He's going to rely on getting it in the post. Um, and so there's guys, you know, that... Those guys aren't, aren't terrible. I mean, Giannis has improved his three-point shooting. He's not a good three-point shooter, but he's willing to take them. Um, and I would say, you know, DeJounte Murray is definitely a better shooter than like Giannis or um, Joel Embiid or whatnot. But like Joel Embiid is not a terrible three-point shooter, especially for being a center. And he's forced into taking more of them than maybe he wants to, especially when Ben Simmons is playing. Um, but that's just kind of today's game for him that he kind of has to deal with. Whereas DeJounte, you know, when we talk again back to that improving every single year on what you're doing, him, OG Ananobi, and Giannis are the three that come to mind when you think of that. Giannis is a guy that had that similar progression. Now, I don't think either of those players will get to a Giannis level, but if you're telling me that DeJounte Murray can't be an all-star level player, I think that you're blind by what you're looking at, right? When you look at Giannis's first, what, what's that, six years in the league, five years in the league? Um, yeah, when you look at his first, really, he improved his scoring his first, I think, eight years in the league. Um, first seven years in the league. But if you look at his first five years in the league alone, right? He goes from coming in, he averages six points per game, He's going to bump that up to double that to 12, bump that up to almost 17, bump that up over 20 to 22 and make his first all-star team and then bump that up to 27. He continues to go and bump that up to 27 and then 29 and he's kind of stayed around that high, you know, 26 to 29 area, right? Um, but he's a guy that improved in every facet of the game for his first five years, right? When you look at his rebounds, you know, a guy that's a big man, um, when he came in, he kind of went from that small forward, he shifted down to that power forward. Now he plays some center. Um, but when you look at his rebounds, he goes from four rebounds to six rebounds to seven rebounds to eight rebounds to 10 rebounds. Uh, when you look at his assists for his first four years in the league, he improved every single season. He went from one assist to two assists to four assists to five assists. And he's kind of stayed in that five to six assist range ever since then. But he's a guy that came in and improved every single year of his career. And... It, to be honest, is still improving at, you know, age 27, headed into his prime. Um, but, you know, until he was 23, there, was, there wasn't there was a year that he didn't improve in points. And until he was 25, there wasn't a year that he didn't improve in points. And there's just all these statistical categories that he just kept improving in. I mean, until he was 25, there wasn't a year that he didn't improve in rebounds. Because not only did he get up to the 10 rebounds, but then he got to... Um, 12 and then he got to 13 and even with his assists he did taper down to four and then he got back up to six so he's a guy that's continued to improve in his career and we've seen what that's voted for him you know multiple time mvps an nba champion um he's a defensive player of the year he's all that right and multiple time all-star an all-time great at this point but Dejounte murray and og Ananobi have that not quite to his level or to extent career development but when you look at DeJounte Murray he's got that development where it's every single year of his career he's developed and he's now at 25 and you know starting in, a, in the next couple years he'll enter his prime and if he enters his prime averaging over 20 points per game the chance that he makes an all-star team in that four-year span or whatever you know even if he's a one-time all-star one-time all-stars are still very you know very decent players um there is not that many all-star spots so if you can make an all-star team you know that's a pretty big accomplishment for yourself not everybody can be an mvp and i'm not saying that Dejounte murray will be an mvp but to say that you know He's probably, there's a, not probably, but there's a very good chance that he can make an all-star team in the next few years. And looking at, you know, how good this draft class is coming up for them, um, him and Keldon Johnson have, you know, that development and they're going to kind of be guys. Um, there is that, what is going to happen with Greg Popovich, um, obviously for the future, but DeJounte Murray, you know, this is a team that drafted a lot of guards. DeJounte Murray's asserted himself at the top. And with this being such a good draft class coming up, 
who's to say that they don't get you know their big time star right they get that superstar now you've got Dejounte murray as your two you've, or kelton johnson is your two and the other one is the three that's a playoff team i mean especially the way the spurs play and especially if pop is still there with the coaching and everything like that that would be a playoff team if you were to get a star in this year's draft and this is a team that you know they're still competing in games like i said um now last night's not a good example of that by you know they lost by a lot and they weren't really in that game um for what i watched of it that much now it wasn't the worst game of last night that's hands down goes to philadelphia 76ers but watching the clippers spurs game um you know they were in it for a little while and then it really got away from them quite a bit um as the game continued on but they're a team that is in most of their games if not all of their games you know what i mean and sometimes they just don't pull out that win there at the end but the fact that you've continued that winning culture even in you know a losing organization is very important for getting yourself back on track right it's something that the timberwolves didn't do they had the one season winning with jimmy butler and then they went straight back to what they were used to doing and that was losing um it's something the rockets aren't doing right now they were winning with james harden but they haven't continued that winning mentality and you know there's a lot of people that you see the rockets on and you're just like i'm just not watching that game they're one in 13 why would i watch that the pelicans they did the same thing they wanted to try and win but they because they were so f confused on roster building after they traded anthony davis they didn't continue their winning mentality and they did such a roster overhaul that it wasn't really there anymore right but when you look at a team like the golden state warriors right a team that just recently had a number two overall pick and took james wiseman they're at the top of the conference and a lot of that is even though they were losing they kept their winning culture they kept their coach um obviously they they've had a lot of roster turnover but the main guys have stayed there and you've been able to kind of you know curve your way back to the top um to stay relevant it's something that you know a lot of teams struggle to do but the san antonio spurs are a team that's proven that that's what they're going to do and i think they're not very an exciting team to watch you know they play a, a good brand of basketball but sometimes they aren't the most exciting team to watch but the fact that they're in all these games they've continued the winning mentality they've got these guys that are have the ability to break out and are breaking out and they're still going to be in contention for a high overall pick i would look for the san antonio spurs around draft time and around um lottery selection time i am going to be very interested to see where they land because it could s change the landscape of the nba depending on who they get because obviously we know how d deep the west is and if the san antonio spurs are right back in the thick of things it only makes things so much better to watch because you know like i said with the rockets that's a team that you don't really want to tune into a lot of nights well the more teams that are good in the nba the better um obviously i've loved the parody this year and i think any nba fan has but um at the end of the day i think the spurs have a aren't going to win a ton of games this year but they've got some good players on the roster obviously they have one of if not the greatest basketball coach of all time and um they definitely have a possibility to make some things happen in the draft and kind of you know move forward with this i think the biggest thing for them would be if they can get that one of those top two picks in chet homegrown or paulo banchero um, I think Chet Holmgren really fits what they would want to do a little bit more, but I do think that, and actually I do, th I'm going to say this now and I'll go deeper into this in a future video, um, since probably not everybody's here at the end of the video. I do think Paulo Banchero will be the best player in this class, although I'm not entirely sure if he'll go number one, but I'll make a future video on that, deep diving that. With that said, um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think the Spurs can do this season. Let me know how good you guys think DeJounte Murray's doing and yeah let me know how long you guys think greg pops is gonna be there with that um with that said now uh, it's been your boy dom and i'll catch y'all next time peace out guys